for sure. It'll definitely be two different weathers too. Be warm and uh, probably a lot firmer than Olympic Club was. So I think she'd be pretty good. Let me ask you a deep philosophical question for the legend Audra Kepler. How? Uh, because you made me think about this. When you get that Oregon sunshine, a little a little rain, a little band and dune uh, daylight. How do you adjust as a player if you've had one condition and then you got to go out and the conditions have changed? Because that realistically could happen at this tournament. What what's what's the adjustment? Yeah, I mean the adjustment is when you get there that day, how your body's feeling. Just pay attention to how your body's feeling, and when you hit balls, and I always put my range finder around and see a target. I'm like, okay, that's 80 yards, and that's typically my my sand wedge. And then I hit like a hundred yard mark, see how far my clubs are going with my typical yardages. And if they're going a little farther that day, then I adjust to that. Or if they're going a little shorter, then I make an adjustment. And once I get out there on the course, I have that yardage and I either play more club or play less club and go from there. So it's a feel thing. I'm going to give you some rapid fire questions for the listeners of the show, the three, four, five, six people out there listening. Um, What's more important, carry number or the total distance your ball goes when you're getting warmed up? I think carry for sure. Because, like, if you know how far your clubs carry, then you can adjust to the golf course of the rollout of the total distance after. What's the biggest obsession you see with the hobbyist golfer that they need to get over? What do you mean by that? The hobbyist golfer. So like, oh, uh, like I think, spin numbers. I or... think people of like, of how far like they're actually hitting it compared, like compared to realistically of how far they're hitting their their tee shots or, or their or their drives especially. Like, a lot of times I go play and people are looking for their ball like twenty yards farther than where they actually were, and I think just the realistic of how far they're hitting it and how far they think they are hitting it. Yeah, I definitely always feel bad for people kind of like that sometimes because like I have to start watching people's balls and that's always kind of rough because like say you're having a good round or you just want to really work on focus, right? Like we've talked yeah. about having focus. It's very hard to keep that focus where you want to be focused the whole time. If you're like, okay, I'm going to have focus. Now I'm going to watch their ball. Now I'm pretty sure they're not going to be able to find their ball because they're going to have the wrong sight line. So I've got to kind of direct them to their ball, but now I have to snap out of it and go back to my focus. Well, that's the beauty of golf, you know, like you're not going to never like help find someone's golf ball or like that's the beauty of just like flipping the switch of like, okay, once we found his golf ball, then you go back to like, okay, what do I need to do here? Like, what, what can I do to be successful in this golf? I need to be in the right uh, state of mind. I think the big thing for me that's helped me with golf is I'm just learning to love the game more. So the more I'm learning to love the game, the more like the things I used to think were important didn't matter nearly as much. Yeah, that's awesome. I take contribution of you loving the game more. We <laughs> you do. Play a lot more golf. Thank you for watching this vlog. I appreciate anyone who contributes or subscribes or even likes a video. This is a passion project and I'm just trying to do the best I can.